All right, y'all, what's up? We are switching out this antique glass handle and we see we have some paint issues to deal with here uh, because the handle, apparently people are just getting locked out. But what we're doing is going to take the mortise lock out and put in a wrap plate, which I hate doing, but when a customer wants it and knows what it's gonna look like, that's just what you do. So we have a white wrap plate, but it's actually kind of a chrome color. Uh, well, and that's satin nickel, so it's, it's not gonna be a terribly great match, but it is what it is type of thing. So this is an inch and three eighths door. And I actually didn't have an inch and three eighths in chrome. So first I just want to see, it's going to just cover up this pretty much, pretty much perfectly. So let's go ahead and get this off the door, which can be a challenge in itself. I did come last week to look at the situation and uh, just tighten these knobs back on but you can see they're floopy we could source a, another mortise lock but kind of at this point in time we're just at the point where it's just best to go ahead and redraw it there's no real security concerns here because we do have the deadbolt above it uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get this guy out so it doesn't give us any trouble Here's why you can't just switch out mortise lock with a regular lock, y'all, because it's got this cavity. See that deep, that deep cavity right there? You got this deep kind of cavity area right there uh, that gives it kind of a weak point, you know? You know, you know? Uh, so what we got to do first and foremost is get this trim off. So let's go ahead and uh, see the slot for the flathead here. Let's see if we can knock that out. Yep, I don't even see the one on this one. There it is. Nope. So I'm just going to hammer down, down the length of the slot. You may want to go around it, but believe it or not, this plate underneath all this paint is probably in okay condition. And uh, these types of things are kind of valued nowadays, depending on what it's made of, of course. So let's see if we can get the gal off with minimal damage. This house is a house is a 40s era house in a neighborhood where there's a bunch of other 40s era houses. And uh, let's go ahead and just hit the top. Should pop it off. Remember, we're gonna be covering all this up. So no big deal. Uh, as long as it doesn't peel too much paint away. Oh, oh my goodness, y'all. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh, yuck, yuck, yuck. So, obviously, we're going to clean off this area of the nail. It's not a nail. It's just cracked wood. We're going to kind of get this just as flat as we can. Mm, it'd be good to have a scraper right here. Which I don't, oh, I do, I do have a scraper. Here we go. A chisel. Make it smooth so it doesn't have any bow outs. 
or as few as possible. <sighs> Looks like we just have a rusty one on this side. Uh -oh. Rusty ones may actually present more of a problem. No, nope, yep, yep, yep. Oh, nope, nope. I'm just kind of trying to get this in the slot. There we go. Oh, they're just, they're ready to unscrew. I think this rusty fella is destined for locks way off this way. What you think? What you think? What you think? And uh, <laughs> somebody needs a paint job. Somebody needs some wood work in the paint job. All right. And uh, once again, we'll grab our chisel. Uh, <laughs> where to where to stop and where to start, right? <laughs> oh, this is actually this is actually gonna help this. This edge is pretty rough. Pretty rough indeed. Alright, time to grab our wrap plate and see what see what it's gonna look like. Uh, now I will point out we have a strike plate here. So right there. Yep. Ideally we want to go ahead and get that centered on that. Alright, so we wanna we wanna put it right there. We're really close though to that um now and i did bring in a bigger strike plate so i'm thinking how much of a gap do we have we're gonna have to chisel out a lot for that strike plate so if we move it up Right about there. That's just a shame that that didn't cover that up. Obviously, the door needs to be painted so you could just claim it off as needing needing paint. But just for sake of argument, let's we'll just center it and move the plate. But not without getting a good look at this guy. We have serious issues right there. And you know what? If we drop it, we could start it here. This is all broken out, so we can actually we can actually have ourselves enough of a gap to, to drop that the two or two what about an inch? I think that's what we're gonna do. This is not great. So that's what we're gonna do. Got a bunch of nails we gotta deal with though, and this is gonna break when we do it. So whenever I'm putting uh, wrap plates on, here's a little trick for you. Go ahead and separate it, either with a knife or whatever, just tear it. I usually just tear it. Right. Bust open the cardboard wrapping. Right. And then we're gonna equally half it. Just about equally. And then we're gonna fold it. Yep, just like that. Fold it in half, and then we're gonna fold this in half. And now look at how much room the door has. So if it's got a big gap, we could fold it one more time. As of right now, I think that's good. So we want to do the same thing and do it with the cardboard out, so you don't, uh, you know, so you don't get print on the wall. 
come on out a little bit further here and here. Just like that. Yep. Okay. So we're good to go there. That's the hardest, hardest part of dealing with this. Now, let's go ahead and mark our plate. I did not bring a pen in, so we're just going to have to wing this. We're going to have to wing it. Remember our hole was about half inch down, so we're going to put that right about there. See how it sits. On these, they have a raised, raised center. Right here, it raises up where the strike plate face plate goes in. So typically you do have to chisel out that area on doors. So if we're going right about there, we're gonna put our mark, we are gonna have to get a pen for sure. Here we go, I've got a pencil right here. So that's about an inch down, about right, about right there. And we want to mark the top, little mark there. Little mark there and and mark right there. So what those marks tell us is over here where we need to chisel out the area. So we're gonna do that. Did I bring a hammer in? I did. That's brilliant, Jason. Just plain brilliant. So we're gonna go ahead. Now we have to do this on a thicker door. You, you wouldn't have to necessarily do that. Do the edge part. But on these thin doors you do. already broken down so you know, that actually should be it. Let's get this inside edge a little bit more.
hole that was there. Tight now. So let's go ahead and take that off and chisel in a new plate.
And of course we have to do a quick rekey from the key that came with it to the customer's key. Uh, and let's uh, knock that out real quick. Schleg F-Series. I uh, locate and I'll push down. Actually, I can take the uh, key out. It makes it a little bit easier. Push down. Rotate that around. Hold that down. And then kind of a lever just like that. An existing key in. 90 degrees. And follow it out. Sometimes it doesn't like following one way versus the other. So... Uh, and it's a little tricky to do because of those T pins. So, Oop. and uh, key to the customer's key. Got to give to the customer's key. Hey, look, it's one of ours. Work smooth, and let's go put it back in and put a long screw in. Since that bottom was rotted out on the door strike, we're gonna have to definitely go with a longer screw with a large head which would be the Schlage make perfect make perfect ones of those so there we go should be all done now